a list here of a few of the things. The first one is, were you were the lead developer on Innistrad, is that correct? That's correct. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that process went? It's, it's considered one of the most popular sets recently. Uh, the limited format got rave reviews from beginning to end. I mean, I know it was either my favorite or my second favorite. I'm sure you hear that a lot. A lot of people loved it. Can you kind of talk us to a little Wait, bit about it? What's your second how favorite? Is it Ravnica? Uh, it's Rise of the Eldrazi. Oh, Rise? Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome, too. That was Matt Place was the lead. Ah, uh, he that. was. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, um, so the way it works is design hands over the initial design. Uh-huh. And it has a view of this is going to be horror. Yes. And... There's going to be humans, which are green, white, uh -huh. and they're going to be vampires that are black, red, and sure. zombies that are black, blue. So they hand those over, and they say how they want each one to, to play. Okay. But they don't necessarily play quite that way. The, the black, red deck's supposed to be aggressive, but it, yes. was, it was an attrition deck where you just kill all your opponent's guys uh -huh. and win with a few fatties. Okay. So it's like, oh, well, they have a great idea of how this... I see what they're trying to accomplish, but uh -huh. they're not doing it. Okay. So you kind of want to do that, and then you want to add a little depth. Mm -hmm. Like, the, we wanted humans to tie to spirits, mm -hmm. and Ad, uh, Adam Lee, who's a creative person, uh, he works in creative, he was yeah. on the development team. Because ah. we have a diverse team. That's an interesting voice to have in your ear for when you're doing that. Right, because we definitely wanted it to keep the horror feel. Uh-huh. And so I asked, you know, how can you tie the, the human deck and the spirit deck together? And he was like, well... The human dies and creates a spirit. It's a ghost. And I was like, yeah. yeah. So, so that's where that came from. Yeah, the Doom Traveler, you know, like that captures that whole dynamic in one very simple card. Right, and creative is the sort of this third branch of this all. Yes. And we wanted vampires, and I was like, they really need something to tie them together. Uh-huh. In addition to changing the cards so they're not attrition, they need an aggressive reward. Okay. And as for what is a piece of text we could put on here, Doug Beyer, who's also in creative. He's a creative guy. Yep. And used to write a weekly article, mm -hmm. Taste the Flavor. Savor the Savor Flavor. Savor the Flavor. Yes. Yeah, Savor the Flavor. <laughs> yes. Very yummy article. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I miss it. And uh, he came up with, well, the slip uh, would be perfect for Vampire. Taking blood, yeah, getting, yeah. growing stronger as you attack. Yeah. So we, we felt those, and then it's like, oh, well, Blue Green was supposed to be some sort of reward for filling up your graveyard. Okay. But it didn't play that way because the blue zombies could eat out of either graveyard at the okay. time. And they didn't have a self-milling self -milling, uh, creatures. They didn't have creatures then. So we wanted to, ch I was, thought it was important that you could only take out of your own graveyard as a reward. Oh, okay. If you could eat out of my graveyard, uh -huh. and I'm playing a deck that's trying to fill up my graveyard, it's just going to be a dumb game. I see. Yeah. I'm going to be like, I put some creatures in. You're going to be like, thanks, I ate them. Right. <laughs> and it, it doesn't have a lot of replay value. So right. like, oh, how can we make this work? And I talked to various people, and Aaron had a great idea of, well, how about a guy enters the battlefield and mills you? Okay. And uh, some people hated those cards. So I was like, well, this is really going to be something to figure out what you're going to do with. Yes, for sure. And so we kind of try and figure out, like, what are these decks going to be? And the blue-green deck was actually so hard that we, we barely got it drafted at all. It's very hard to right? The, I get managed to draft it once, but I had uh, Sever the Bloodline in my deck. Uh -huh. And I was like, I don't know if it, if it works or not. I'm probably misbuilding it. But you definitely <laughs> can make it work with some rares. I uh -huh. had the rare guy who mills you two cards per turn. And there's a uh, star the star. Uh, Splinter Fright. Splinter Fright, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. So I had some rares and it worked. And it was like, maybe someone else can figure out. But I knew this would be good, because if I couldn't get it to work right away, the tools are probably there. I added a gnaw to the bone. Uh-huh. And Which ended up being a card that was overlooked early and quite popular late in the format. Right, because so a long time ago in Ice Age Alliances was the first that time That was I a while ago. Yes. <laughs> I, for the first time I qualified, I played Necropotence, but the first PTQ I went to, I played, played Blue Red Browse Digger. Okay. And Browse is a card where you look at some cards and you put one in your hand and exile the rest, and uh, the Soldavi Digger put cards back into your deck. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay, I want to create kind of a... If there's self-milling and there's flashback, you need, in the end, to have a way of not decking yourself. Yes. So while it might, it will, I hope it feels organic, but the blue-green, the green-blue flashback card, which, uh, or I guess it's Memory's green, Journey. Right. Mm-hmm. Was planted there to enable this whole thing. Ah. Where you can feel like, oh, yeah, yeah. Now... And it's like a safety valve as well for getting, milling yourself on accident, like because if you get a little too much momentum going, or you can do it on purpose. Yes, which is something that happened in that format a little bit later, 
uh, after people kind of got to you know dig around in there and figure out what was going on. I think that was one of the things that people really liked about it. And I also wanted to ask you about as well, which are these build around me uncommons. Right, so we like having the obvious things to draft, which mm -hmm. you can draft your first time, but then you know you don't just want to be playing only tribal decks all day. You have to have something else. So if you look at that, the allied ones were the things that hit the tropes that Mark Rosewater wanted. Uh-huh. And the enemy colored ones were more difficult to build and were like, oh, what do you do with these cards? Uh-huh. And try and like not draft obvious them at all. Right, right. And try and figure out there's the Burning Vengeance deck. Mm -hmm. Well, that one's a little more obvious than the blue-green deck, mm -hmm. unless you put, you can all shove them together. Okay. But it was like, okay, so I want flashback cards. And then there's this runic repetition, uh, which gets an exiled flashback card back to your hand. It first looks like, oh, this is great. Yeah. Then you try it and it's kind of like, this is crummy. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, maybe with the, if I build a whole deck around it, it'll yes. pay off. And if you committed to that, you could do it. You and could. I thought that was great. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the a couple of the rares as well from sure. that set. Um, some of them have seen. Now remember, I don't know the names because we have played test Okay, and no then... worries. I will. I will translate them for you. I, I'll say the name so that the listeners You're can right, know right, right. and then or the I'll viewers. I'll figure it out when you say it. Yeah. So one of them um, that I particularly liked in limited and also saw some constructed play and a lot of uh, like sort of tier two. Uh, constructed play like maybe not here at these tables with the, the hardcores but like at the kitchen tables and really anywhere in between was bloodline keeper yeah 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 and i wanted to talk to you about that because one of the things that i really appreciated about bloodline keeper is that when you played it in like when you played it in constructed it was just sweet right, right. it was just a really nice uh like a rare that people liked a vampire when you played it in limited though it had a dramatic effect on the board in the sense that it was powerful it demanded attention, it was kind of tough to kill. But the thing I really appreciated about it is that it didn't just hit you over the head. You know, it wasn't like, here's a Grave Titan, go. Right, if you, if you saved your kill card for it mm -hmm. and removed it, then you were fine. And we purposely put in a little bit of expensive removal uh -huh. so drafters wouldn't always first pick it. Yeah. Because if every removal is a first pick card, then it's just who opened the removal, has the removal. There's no right. skill as to when you're going to take it. Right. But if you have what we call clunky removal, uh -huh. then you can get some pass to you, uh -huh. and you have to decide if you even want it as your second or third pick. Okay. Uh, the Bloodline Keeper, we were debating actually making it five mana. Yeah, I, I could see that. Because it was, it's a, it's really strong and limited. It was like, yes. do we want it to be this strong? But, um, so we also had, we knew Vampires would be popular at F&M, and um, I can't remember who it was. It may have been Dave Gusson. Someone did pretty well, not necessarily the single best deck, not as good as like Solar Flare and Red Green Ramp, but mm -hmm. pretty well with um, a, a vampire deck. And it was like, oh, this is probably at least good enough to play an F&M, maybe, maybe better, because we're going to be wrong sometimes yes. and miss a card. Okay. We're like, okay. So we were contemplating adding a mana to it, but it was like, well, it seems to make a pretty sweet FNM level deck. Yeah, I think so too. And well, one mana, I mean, it is frustrating to lose to, but usually you can get rid of it. You got to turn to kill it. Yeah. Uh, one more question and then we're going to let you go because we got to go to a break. Yeah. Legacy Unbannings. Legacy you, you have some word into this, I'm told. Yes, yes. Um, we just saw Lantax Unbanned. Absolutely. Um, are there other cards on the legacy list that like do you keep like kind of a list of things that are like you know Does this still need to be and you know Maybe you guys try out a few things or kind of keep an eye on the meta like how yeah. aggressive are you towards trying to uh, so, Adjust that list so on unbanning right so Last year was the first year I think in a while that we didn't unban mm -hmm. We banned mental mystic and we were like we weren't sure what to unban at the same time Okay, but most years we do unban a card and we sort of have yeah some cards we'd like to unban Partially because, um, so Lantex, we didn't unban it for a number of years because it was, so you play Jundin standard, okay. your cards leave standard, and let's say you didn't want to play extended because it rot will rotate again. Sure. And you're like, what's a non-rotating format? Legacy. Okay. And we didn't want to be so powerful that you couldn't play your Jund deck. Right. And, but now uh, we're like, well, maybe if it's too, if it's not strong enough for that, you can always play modern. Let's make legacy for the legacy players. Okay. And we know legacy players want to try land tax. And they want the hardcore, the most potent, crazy old stuff that right, you can right, get Right, right. Uh, we kind of have this rule that we'll just unban cards every year. And maybe, like, ideally you get, like, as far as Necropotence, you know? Yeah, like, I know. I, I know you. I know that's you where you're going. Right? <laughs> and then if, if you can do that, then you know you can right, right, Maybe good. Chris McCool will come back when he sees... <laughs> 
You know, he's playing in the GP right now. Oh, he is. So yeah, he's playing Legacy. He's playing Legacy. Yep. Well, kudos to him. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely do think about it. We look at okay. the meta game, and we're like, um, you know, there's not a lot, ton of white and slower decks going on, so yeah. let's give them another card. Okay. But, yeah, we try and give a card a year. All right. Well, Eric, I want to thank you for your time. Thank really you, appreciate Marshall. it. I could talk to you for hours, but we need to go to a break. So we're going to be back uh, for the next round, round eight or seven, whichever one it is, uh, in just a little bit. So there is uh, there's well, we the table. The there because we're clearly seeing green versus red here. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it looks like the Italian flag a little bit it does without a little. The, without the blue. We can't. We need the. So it looks like blue white Delver on the left from Nick Harlow, and on the right is Hayden McCartney, and he is rocking black red zombies. Now we haven't seen zombies yet. Not today. No. Um, it feels like I don't think I would want to run that deck in this tournament with all these mid range things flying around. It feels like they're going to be a little bit bigger than you are. I don't know if this deck has the, the speed to uh, do it, but it looks like straight blue-white Delver for Nick here, too. So we're going to get a chance to uh, see two decks that are really trying to progress their game plans very, very proactively and see who, uh, who's going to come out on top here. Yeah, I think now we don't have the deck list, so we, we can't say for sure what version of blue-white Delver. Oh, we're going to have the deck, deck list. list so Voila. Yeah. So, uh, um, pink deck. All right, so here's looking at the. Yeah, this is. I, I want to I wanna know more the about the zombies. Okay, I think so that we, we've uh, seen okay. the Delver list. Uh, let me just take a quick Delver, Snapcaster, Geist, Restoration Angel, Blue White Delver. We yeah. know this deck. So, what yeah. about the zombies list here? Now the zombies list is kind of going in the direction that I think a lot of zombies lists are going mm -hmm. recently with the Blood Artist kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's huge for zombies. I think giving it that kind of reach, it reminds me in a strange way of the whole Live Wire Lash Infect situation mm -hmm. where you're like, I don't have to attack to to kill you. Right. Um, I can I can do other things. You know, I, I can circumvent the combat step entirely. Yep. So uh, and there are four blood artists in Hayden's list. All right. So, so Diagraph Ghoul comes down for Hayden. Nick played an island, had no turn one play, no Delver. You know, which is kind of the the standard. But he didn't right. have it in his opener. He does have a second blue source here, and he's just gonna ship the turn back so he's representing snapcaster blade as i call it yeah. you know you can flash it in and just trade with something it's not the ideal use for a card like snapcaster mage but it is sometimes what you need to do we might be seeing like a blood artist pre-combat to play around that or you know to maximize on that but we're not no blood artist so i think he's just going to be taking it here yeah i would not trade a snapcaster for two damage at this point in the game yeah we can also see um you know th th there's very much a mana leak possible oh yeah 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 and Ooh, a Porcelain Legionnaire. Yeah, Porcelain Legionnaire. Now these 3 1 first strike it for two and a white Phyrexian mana. So very aggressive, and it looks like it's going to resolve as well. What, what are we did see? Nick keep, if not? No kidding. Okay. He got well, it. He has a Vapor Snag. He does snag. have something, but that's not ideal. Well, he did, did a nice, uh, it was a nice little lightning bolt. It was a lightning bolt. There. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> two from your Phyrexian mana and one from the Vapor Snag. Kind of jilt like. Yeah, Hayden should be at 17, right? Indeed. Vapor snag plus Phyrexian oh, mana. Yep. Yeah. And right, Geist you know, of Saint. This Trap is a much better neck. spot. Now we see a Geist come down in a position where it can actually start doing some beatdowns. Yeah. yeah. So Hayden's got to decide what he wants his plan to be. If he decides not to attack then he leaves that up to be able to potentially block the Geist, but he just exposes yeah, himself to so like, many yep. bad things. <laughs> Gonna get hit by an angel. And there's that Porcelain Legionnaire there again. There comes back. Now, does he have a follow-up one-drop, or...? No. Oh! Oh! Yes, he does. I spoke too soon. He has uh, a Grave, grave crawler. crawler. All right. Well, that's a pretty so. nice board state. That's one that could potentially race... Yeah, now this is something the that. Geist of Saint Traft. Something that um, came up. It was it was a few months ago, but I can't mm -hmm. remember exactly what event it was. But a player played Poison Legionnaire, got it bounced by Vapor Snag, replayed it, got it bounced by Vapor Snag again. It's like that Poison Legionnaire cost him almost half his life total oh, that's because brutal. his opponent continued to Vapor Snag it. And uh, I hope Hayden isn't walking into the same trap. I mean, um, there's only one it, creature that can block for Hayden, and he just simply has to. So. Yeah, so it looks Restoration like... Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel is going to save the Geist of St. Traft from yep. the uh, the claws of the Porcelain Legionnaire, which to me means that... Uh, yeah, there's Porcelain Legionnaire. 
Um, so it's a nice three-one first striker, but that's irrelevant when the uh, when Restoration Angel comes down to save the guys. So Hayden takes four from the the Angel, and Geist of Saint Trath is restored. This board looks very nice for Nick. Uh, he's got a three-four blocker. It's going to prevent pretty much any attacks here unless it can be unless it gets killed. If it does get killed, then then it changes the complexion. I see a go for the throat in hand, and he's going to do it after casting. Yes, so there's a blood, blood artist. artist. Now that's going to change the complexion of this game dramatically. So Hayden's going to go to 12.